Look into my dial, look into my dial. You are beginning to feel very sleepy. You are going to reach for your wallet, pull out your credit card and order yourself just one more watch. Hello and welcome. Perhaps you've noticed from this slightly odd intro and this slightly odd thumbnail today, the watch I'm going to show you is also slightly on the odd side. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Humism. They didn't have to twist my arm all that hard though. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I like showing you these oddities every six months or so. Watches that throw the traditional three hand rule book straight out of the window. It all began in early 2017 when I reviewed the Trifolio Millimetro, Miota powered three rotating discs that you actually had to read vertically. I then reviewed the Gravity Alpha GT124, a watch with some similarities to today's watch by Humism, but at a more expensive price and the specs weren't as good. And who can forget the d wist that I showed you just before Christmas? Perhaps it was unforgettable because they decided to send me a bright green and white one. Perhaps also because it was 1200 US dollars. Now, nobody is suggesting, least of all me, that this Dacian by Humism is going to replace your Seiko SKX as your everyday beater, but I really do find watches like this intriguing and utterly mesmerizing. Let's flip the camera and have a look at it. All right, we're off on a bit of a trip together today, you and I, with this one. And the trip starts with the outer packaging, as you can see. Now, if you head over to the Humism website, I'll leave a link to that one in the description of the video. Three different models to choose from. I've gone for the Dacine, which looks kind of like snowflakes, if you ask me. There is also the Eudaimonia, which is a circular pattern on the dial instead, and a less geometric one in the form of the Geist. They're all priced somewhere between 298 and 318 US dollars. I'll obviously talk about that price later on. Look, there we are. Trippy patterns even from the outer packaging. Now, the warranty is as unique as the watch. There's an instruction manual here, etc., uh, detailing what you need to do to get the watch fired up, which obviously I have no intention of reading. Certificate of authenticity with an individual number. This is from the Philosophies range. And an 18 month warranty. Not one year or two year, but 18 months. I'm not quite sure what the logic in that one was. Anyway, flipping open the outer packaging, and really that's what we're interested in here today. The watch head and two pieces of strap. Let's get it assembled. So I'm gonna start with dimensions and specifications as normal. Then really, this one is all about the looks. So we're gonna get some nice close-ups. I'll do a bit of time-lapse, some macro on the dial as well. There is no second hand, so I'm not even gonna bother with a movement accuracy report. It's not really about the accuracy today. And there is no loom, so there will be no loom video either. 39 millimeters bang on in diameter, just over 12 millimeters thick. 45 mil lug tip to lug tip, so a fairly compact set of dimensions. I think if you're a lady and you're looking for something different as well, you could just about get away with a watch this size. 20 millimeters lug width, and on the supplied Italian vegetable tan grain leather strap, it's a good one, I'll show you that in more detail later. This watch weighs 74 grams. Dead flat sapphire crystal, covering the dial with anti-reflective coating on the underside, and it's a sapphire crystal display case back as well. So sapphire sandwich. Good to see, 316L stainless steel three-piece case, crown sapphire, so they haven't skimped on the materials. It is all about the looks today, but it's a fairly robust little case that they've decided to, to fit everything into. Now, the Seiko movement, it's the classic NH35, seen in a million and one micro brands at or around this price point. 24 joules, it hacks, it hand winds, it's rugged, robust, reliable, about a 40 hour power reserve, and it beats at six ticks per second. So it's a three hertz movement, 21,600 vibrations per hour. Now that is important when we go back to the front of the watch. That pattern changes six times per second. Humism refer to this as kinetic art, and you can see what they mean. Constantly shifting depending on the hour, the minute, and the second or even the sixth of a second at which point you view the watch. So 
What time is it? Well, in spite of its crazy looks, it still is just a three-hander. On the spindle, rather than putting individual hands, they put these discs instead. So currently quarter past five. It can be hand wound, as I mentioned, if you want to give it a wind, then don't adjust the crown at all, don't pull it out. Now, if you pull the crown out once, there is a kind of ghost date wheel. So it's still an NH35, it's just missing the date complication hasn't hacked, it hasn't stopped the movement running. If you pull it out to the second position, the movement will stop and you can adjust the time. And as you can see there, that is the, the minute hand adjusting. I'll pull it round to six. There we are. So that is the, the minute and that is the hour there. Pretty straightforward. As I said, quite like the gravity alpha in the way that you read it. Pretty easy one to get used to. Doesn't divert too far from the traditional three-hander in that respect. Push the crown back in and those pretty little patterns start all over again. Case finishing is very simple. It's not really about the case after all this one is about the dial. All brush finish here, apart from a little bit of polish on the branded crown, the HU for humism. Crown isn't super easy to operate. It's a little bit small, but there is a cut out there so you can get a fingernail underneath when you want to adjust it. I guess they didn't want to have a super huge crown, which is why they've gone that route. And the strap, as I suggested, is a good one. Pelle Italiana, quick release spring bars, Italian made, vegetable tan, smells pretty good, nice stitching, branded with the Humism logo on the top side, and a nice all brushed buckle with the Humism logo matching the finishing of the watch itself. So let's get it on wrist then, and there it is, sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. Now, in spite of the craziness, 39 mil is still quite a modest, still quite a discreet size. So it's not a huge watch, 12 mil thick as well. A bit of curvature to those lugs, it wears quite well. I don't think it's gonna suit you necessarily if you've got a, a big boy eight inch wrist. I think it might look a bit small, but for me, just about perfect. And that's it zoomed out a little bit higher. It's actually still quite legible. There are five minute increments, kind of five minute markers, if you will, on that outer white rim. So you get a pretty good idea of where you're going time-wise. Here we are about 23 minutes past five. And the pretty patterns look good when you're out in some natural light as well. AR coating on the flat sapphire crystal as noted, so you still get to see what's going on in the dial, even in some bright sunlight. Relatively compact 45 mil lug tip to lug tip as well as noted, so it does fit nicely. The strap's a bit tight because it's new, but that one looks like it will wear well. Moans and niggles then, well, it's not really going to be a practical everyday timepiece for most people. 50 meters water resistance though, so it does have a degree of practicality. Sapphire crystal, stainless steel, you know, it's built to last. It's not a kind of throwaway watch. It may be a bit of a novelty watch, but it's not one that's designed to be put in the bin after six months or so. The case finishing is very, very simple. I guess the action is on the dial, so they haven't put a lot of uh, attention to detail elsewhere. Everything else is quite simple and quite plain. 300 US dollars, I don't think that is extortionate, I don't think they're gouging, but it is not all that cheap either. If that's a bit much for you at the moment, I believe Humism are launching another Kickstarter campaign soon. I would imagine the Kickstarter campaign prices, if they do another batch or a slightly different patterns on the dial, will be slightly cheaper than 300. And if we go macro for a moment, you can see that the finishing on the edges of those black discs, not quite what you'd want it to be. You can still see little marks there where they've been cut. If you're looking at the watch head on, you don't notice it. But if you do tilt the watch and if you're looking at it from an angle, you can see little bits where the, the paint's missing around the edges of those discs. But overall, I think a fun watch, definitely something different from the norm and definitely one that will find its place in the market, I'm sure. I really do like these oddities. You can expect to see them popping up on the channel at regular intervals in the future. So there you have it, the Dacine by Humism. Definitely one of the better spec and better priced oddities that I've reviewed on the channel. Less than 300 US dollars, Seiko NH35, Sapphire Crystal, and that vegetable tanned Italian leather strap, a, a nice little bonus. Not an everyday watch. You're not gonna be wearing this one to the office, Monday to Friday, nine to five. You'd probably spend all your day looking at those discs rotating. It wouldn't be good for your productivity levels. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.